again guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we have yet another aircraft review. As the new influx of add-ons into Microsoft Flight Simulator seems to continue unabated. Bizarrely as well, a lot of the new aircraft Microsoft Flight Simulator seem to be coming in pairs. Within the next couple of days we should have two Piper Arrow 3s available in the sim. In the not too distant future we'll have two Supermarine Spitfires available in the sim. And with Just Flight announcing the development of their BAE Hawk for Microsoft Flight Simulator, the aircraft that you can see in front of you will essentially be number one of the two Hawks that we'll have in the sim. It would certainly be nice if all these add-on developers could have a little bit of a chat and figure out who's making what ahead of time. But anyway, we'll work with what we've got and as I said in today's video we'll essentially be reviewing Hawk number one that's coming to the sim. Now I'm sure the eagle-eyed amongst you and particularly my American viewers will be saying hang on a moment that's not a Hawk and of course you'd be absolutely right. The aircraft that we are in fact looking at today is of course the India Fox Teco T-45 Goshawk. I'm sure many of you are now familiar with India Fox Teco. They made the rather excellent MB-339 from Microsoft Flight Simulator. The MB-339 was the first jet to come into the sim. And on a complete side note, my video review of the MB-339 was also my most popular video to date. Anyway, the MB-339 was an absolutely excellent product from India Fox Teco. So I'll be very interested to see how the T-45 stacks up against it in today's review. So for the video today we are essentially on the deck of what is a United States Navy Nimitz class aircraft carrier in the India Fox Teco T-45 Goshawk. Of course there isn't really a more appropriate place to be testing out the aircraft. It's worth mentioning just before I begin the review that whilst the carrier models that we'll be using in today's review are freeware and are readily available online, the actual tool that we'll be using for the catapult launch and the arrest of recovery onto the deck is the payware module by Hard Deck Simulations. So if you do want to recreate anything that you see in today's video, you will need the Hard Deck Simulations module in order to operate the Goshawk accordingly. So for the video today, as I mentioned, we're currently on the deck of a USN Nimitz class carrier, currently out to the west of the island of Kahului in the Hawaiian Islands. As usual, we'll first take a little bit of a tour around the external model of the aircraft, We'll then head inside the cockpit, take a little bit of a look around there before carrying out a full startup of the T-45. We'll launch off the deck and head east out towards the island of Kahului. We'll head for the mountains on the western side of the island, throw the aircraft around a little bit and put it through its paces. After we're satisfied that we've done that, we'll return back to the carrier group for a landing on the deck. Anyway guys, I do hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. But now let's continue on with our tour of the external model of the India Fox Teco T-45 Goshawk. So we already know from their MB-339 that India Fox Teco are more than capable of making a beautiful aircraft model within Microsoft Flight Simulator. And once again, as you can see with their T-45 Goshawk, they've done an absolutely stunning job of recreating the aircraft. It really seems to be getting to the point now where every aircraft I review within Microsoft Flight Simulator is raising the bar in terms of visual modelling. Each time I think to myself that we've hit a ceiling in terms of what's actually possible within the sim, the next developer seems to come along and surpass my expectations once again. Anyway, the India Fox Teco T-45 Goshawk doesn't really appear to be any exception to this rule. I think that the aircraft looks absolutely wonderful. I think that the Hawk or the Goshawk is a really beautiful aircraft, and India Fox Teco seem to have done it absolute justice getting the modelling bang on. Once again, the aircraft hasn't just been modelled well on a macro scale. As we've really come to expect now from Microsoft Flight Simulator aircraft models, the attention to detail all over the aircraft is really quite breathtaking. Just looking at the nose landing gear, for example, it looks like every piece of the assembly has been modelled to really exacting standards. As you can see, the model also comes with some really nice external protective coverings when the aircraft is powered down. So you'll get the pitot and static covers, the engine inlet and engine exhaust covers as well as a couple of safety pins for things like the ejection seats and the canopy destination mechanism. Once again, the cockpit looks pretty much just as good from the outside as it does from the inside. One of my only slight disappointments with the model is that the pilot in the rear seat no longer shows up internally as he did on the MB339. I quite like that in the MB339, I thought it added a little bit more to the immersion and it also allowed you to get some really nice screenshots. But obviously that's personal preference and it's getting quite pedantic when that's the most major fault you can find with the model. So once again, an absolutely stunning external visual model from India Fox Teco. 
And it's not just the modeling, the textures as well hold up extremely well. They're very crisp, very sharp, and the PBR rendering looks absolutely wonderful, particularly in these current lighting conditions. Anyway, that's enough about the externals of the aircraft. Let's now head into the cockpit. We'll have a quick look around in there and then we'll get the aircraft started up. So welcome to the cockpit of the India Fox Teco T-45 Goshawk. As usual, before we get the aircraft started up, we'll first take a quick look around the cockpit to get a feel for the modelling and the texturing of the internal model. And I have to say that once again, India Fox Teco have really knocked the ball out of the park when it comes to the T-45. Everything is modelled and textured to a really high standard. It's a pretty immaculate job, I have to say. Most of the systems as well seem to be operable, which is really nice to see. There are some exceptions, of course, but we'll run through those as we go along. And once again, the uh, texturing holds up really, really well, even when we zoom right in. Overall, I just really like the cockpit. I think it has a very nice ambience to it. It feels very lived in, but also like it's been maintained to a very high standard. Anyway, we'll run the before start checklist. So the fuel shut off can go into the downed and locked position. Ignition switch can go to normal. Display power is in the normal position. Fuel control is in the normal position. Engine switch we should put in the on position, but there's only off or start modelled on the aircraft. Control augmentation goes to SBI, which it currently is. Standby stabiliser trim is in the guarded position. Throttle is off. Anti-skid can come on. Emergency flaps are in the normal position. Launch bar is retracted. Emergency gear handle is in. Landing gear lever is down. Master arm is in the safe position. VCR is off. Flight instruments are checked. HUD is off. MFDs are off. Cabin pressure is checked. Radios are off. Pito heat is off. Hook bypass will leave on carrier, of course, for today. The hook handle is up. Nav radios are off. Batteries are off. Generator reset we can put in the central position, that's on. And the external lights. So unfortunately some of the external lights are not fully modelled. For example with the navigation lights we can only have those in steady, we can't have them in flash. And the uh, same for the anti-collision light, we can only have that on with the strobes, we can't have the anti-collision light just on its own. Anyway we'll put the anti-collision light on for the start. For the start itself, battery 1 and 2 can go on. Seat has been adjusted. Fuel quantity is checked and we have uh, 1500 pounds on board for the flight today. Advisory, so we have the uh, anti-skid advisory which we should expect to see. Fire and warning lights, so there's no fire light. For the warnings we have oxygen generator, oil pressure and hydraulics which we would expect. Hydraulic 1 and 2 pressure we should see a reading of 0 which we have. And the brake pressure we should see uh, 1250, which we also have. Flaps we have selected down and we're showing uh, full flaps. Landing gear we have selected down and we have three greens. Canopy, we'll uh, leave that open for the start just so you can hear the startup sounds a little bit better. For the start itself we'll engage the uh, gas turbine starter. Wait for that to spool up. So the gas turbine starter spooling up, as soon as that's stable we'll engage the uh, engine start switch. So we'll put the engine to start. And waiting for 17% N1 then we'll move the throttle into the idle position. So 17% throttle to idle, you can see we just have a uh, slight rise in fuel flow there. And waiting for the engine to spool up. Again I'll keep fairly quiet here, allow you to listen to the uh, engine spool up sounds. And the engine almost stabilised. 
So it looks like we have a good start. Next item on the checklist, we can turn the uh, oxygen on. So we turn the uh, OBOG system on and turn the uh, oxygen flow on. HUD we can turn on. Worth noting right off the uh, bat, the HUD is not collimated, just like the uh, F-15 from DC Designs. Unfortunately, that's just a limitation with the SDK and the sim right now. There's nothing that developers can do about that, but as you can see, the HUD is basically just a printed image. It's not a uh, collimated site. MFDs can come on. And again, I really like the uh, attention to detail there that we get the uh, the bike test, the self startup test. We'll go uh, ADI on the uh, left MFD. We'll go to mono. I believe that's more realistic for the uh, Goshawk. And we'll go HSI on the right MFD. Radios can come on. They should uh, fire up shortly. They go through a little self test as well. And the IFS system can go to standby. So do a quick uh, systems check before we get taxiing, bringing the throttle up to 70%. Just getting a caution there for the park brake still being on. So there's 70%, uh, we do a uh, hydraulics reset and checking that the light has gone off on the caution panel. Again, really nice detail there, a lot of accuracy it seems in the systems. Come back to idle again. Looking for around uh, 3,000 psi in the hydraulic systems, which we have. Trims are checked. Rudder and ailerons in the neutral position. We can trim uh, three degrees nose up for the takeoff on the stab. Instruments are checked, and we have the uh, correct altitude showing on the altimeter and the HUDs. No altitude warning, we'll uh, turn that off today so we can set that at zero. And uh, bingo fuel, we can set that as well. Again, really nice system step for a uh, fairly reasonably priced aircraft. So bingo fuel, we're set at £1,000. I'm actually hoping we'll trigger that on the way home just to see if the system works correctly. Flight controls, so usually the uh, ground attendant would check the flight controls as we move them, but we'll do a quick flight control check ourselves. So flight controls are full free and in the correct sense. And the canopy will close. And the canopy is locked. You'll notice a nice change in sound as well when we do that. Flaps will set to uh, half for the takeoff. So there's the half position. And we're showing half flaps on the indicator. Speed brake, we'll check that's retracted. And the pitot heat can come on. So checking our uh, cautions there, the only one we still have is the uh, flight control augmentation system which will turn on once we get ourselves lined up on the catapult. So we are ready for the taxi, the part brake can come off and we'll make our way out towards the catapult at the bow of the ship. So another master caution there, that's just for the uh, seat still not being armed yet I believe. So we're all lined up on the uh, catapult now, we've got the launch bar extended, we'll continue with the checklist so the flight controls augmentation can go to all. Anti-skid is on, flaps are set for takeoff, elevator trim we have three units up set for the takeoff, canopy is closed and locked, harness is secure, ejection seat we've removed the safety pin and we'll now put that in the armed position, canopy We'll remove the uh, safety pin there as well, so that's now armed. Fuel control is in the normal position. Strobes are on. Pito heat is on. IFF set to normal. Landing lights come on. 
warnings and cautions, so we have no warnings. On the cautions panel we just have the uh, anti-skid and the nose wheel steering. Launch bar is extended, and that's the before takeoff checklist complete. So we are now ready for the launch, however just before we do that we'll briefly discuss the aircraft's MFD displays, otherwise it's going to be a little bit tricky to do in the air. This won't be an exhaustive list of all the possible options within each display, but we'll briefly run through some of the main options now, just to give you a feel for the level of systems depth that's been modelled into the India Fox Teco T45 MFDs. So for example currently on the left MFD we have our ADI displayed, as I showed earlier we can select between mono or a uh, colour display for that. Once again we can display the uh, HSI on the left hand display as well if we want, or we can display the HUD information. By the menu we have a series of other options, not all of which are operative, but for example we have a stores page and an engine page. As you can see overall a pretty decent amount of functionality there. Coming over to the right hand MFD we currently have the HSI displayed. And again we have a plethora of options on the, this display as well. We can select our flight plan to auto sequence or not. We can select the scale at which we display our flight plan on the HSI. We can select which source of navigation information we want to display, for example we can display waypoints, TACAN or VOR. We can cycle through various waypoints. So we'll cycle out to waypoint 1. We have a CDI option as well if we want to display that, we can set that up to track either the uh, GPS or the TACAN slash VOR. So again not an exhaustive list of everything available to us but overall as you can see the functionality is actually pretty decent with the uh, India Fox Teco T45 in terms of its MFD displays. Again overall the aircraft is done to a really nice standard. Anyway as I say we're now ready for the exciting part, we are ready for the launch, so we'll get the aircraft up into the air. Once we're in the air we'll briefly head outside again, check out some of the external views and then we'll join back with the aircraft just as we approach the island of Kahului to put it through a little bit of a run around the mountains and get a feel for the aircraft's handling. So we're using the HTS carrier module here which means we need to come up to full power for the uh, launch. We'll get a parking brake warning there, of course usually we wouldn't be doing this with the parking brake on. So there's full power, as soon as we release the parking brake we'll be launched off the cat. And we're off. So up we go, positive climb, the gear can come up. And we're good now to retract the flaps as well. So nice launch overall. Uh, one bug you'll definitely notice is that currently if we have the launch bar extended for the launch and then we retract the uh, landing gear the launch bar actually clips through the airframe itself. So that's certainly something that needs fixing. We'll retract the uh, launch bar, that does at least uh, get rid of the problem. Come back to 95% uh, now on the RPM. So overall the aircraft very responsive, very smooth to fly. Get ourselves trimmed out at around 2000 feet. The aircraft does need quite a lot of trimming I've found so far, it's not uh, particularly responsive on the trim. You can see we do have a nice little arrow on the HUD as well which points us straight towards our waypoints. We can use the uh, CDI there as well on the nav display. Anyway as I say we've got ourselves trimmed out now here in the cruise. We'll head over towards the island of Kahului. We'll briefly head outside again now to check out some of the external views of the aircraft. And I'll come back to you again just as we approach the island for our little uh, play around in the mountains. So as you can see we are just approaching the island of Kahului and we're coming up on the uh, mountain range. As I said we'll have a little bit of fun, we'll play around in the hills for a moment, just get a feel for the aircraft. Then we'll climb up a little bit, 
get a feel for the aircraft's climb performance. So we'll come up to uh, full power. One thing I have noticed about the aircraft, you do seem to need quite high power settings even to maintain a reasonable speed. Around 90% RPM we were only doing about 200 knots which may or may not be accurate, I'm not really sure on that one. Anyway we'll start coming down the valley. Throw the aircraft around a little bit through some of the valleys here. My initial impressions are, I have to say the aircraft actually feels quite heavy on the controls, not really what I was expecting. Certainly not saying it's inaccurate, I have no idea how a Hawk flies in the real world, but I was expecting to feel very light and agile. It does feel quite manoeuvrable, but it certainly feels like it has a lot more uh, weight and a lot more inertia to it than the uh, MB339 for example. As I said overall just feels a lot heavier and a little bit less responsive on the controls than I was expecting. Anyway, it looks like the uh, max speed of the aircraft is is around 600 knots. Do a little bit of a climb, see how the aircraft handles that. Still got full power at the moment. So speed bleeding back, currently getting over 10,000 feet a minute worth of climb, but of course we're training speed for altitude at the moment. Do a little bit of a roll. So there's full deflection on the ailerons. Roll rate seems pretty good. And that's full back stick now. So again, uh, overall, the uh, performance was not quite what I was expecting in terms of the aircraft feeling agile. Turn radius seems to be uh, rather significant. Overall though, the aircraft is very nice to fly once again. It's very responsive, very smooth. It's just that, uh, as I said, a little bit heavy on the controls, it feels a little bit more weighty than I was expecting. I've always heard stories of how nimble and how wonderful the Hawk is to fly, or oh, sorry the Goshawk in this case. But it is a training aircraft so obviously it doesn't want to be uh, too much of a handful so again it may well be that it's actually modelled very accurately, I'm not really sure there. I'll come back on the power, we'll try a stall. So through 200 knots. Fuel's also coming up on 1100 pounds, so we should get a bingo warning fairly soon. Be interesting to see what happens there. So we hit about 120 knots, the nose starting to drop now. No buffeting though, no uh, stall warning. So the aircraft is very placid in the stall. The nose does drop, but overall not very much behaviour there. I would say that feels broadly like a default aircraft in terms of the stall. And we'll see if we can get it to spin as well just before we uh, come back up to speed. So right now I've still got full aft elevator at the moment. The uh, ailerons are still pretty responsive I have to say. That's uh, full deflection on the ailerons. The aircraft very slow to lose speed as well as you can see. And again, the nose wanting to drop on me now. So I'll put in some uh, significant aileron inputs. Still have pretty much full aileron authority. Seems we're not really going to get the aircraft to spin. Anyway, we'll recover from the stall, so coming back up on the power. And one last little test before we head back. I did tune up the uh, Maui VOR. So you can see that that is uh, currently on the HSI with the CDI bar there. So that's all working correctly. I haven't tried a Takan yet in the aircraft. Anyway, the uh, flight plan will set that back up to uh, take us back to the carrier group. A 
I'll come up to 90% in one just to show you what I meant about the uh, speed. Starting to get fairly late evening as well here on the islands of Hawaii. So we get to get back to the carrier group before things start to get dark. Last thing I need is my first carrier landing in the aircraft to be at night. So as you can see I've got 90 uh, RPM currently and the uh, speed's still bleeding off at the moment. As I say I ran some tests earlier and we were getting about 200 knots from the aircraft in the uh, clean configuration at 90 RPM which to me seems a little bit low but again that could be entirely accurate. I'm not that familiar with the uh, the Hawk or the Goshawk. Anyway we'll uh, come back up to 95% RPM now that seems to give us a pretty nice cruise speed. And we'll track back towards the uh, carrier group as I said. We'll take a look at a couple more external views on the way back as we didn't really get much of a chance on the outbound leg. And then we'll uh, attempt a landing back onto the deck. So we're currently back inbound towards the deck of the carrier as you can see, about uh, 0.2 miles to run, just passing through 800 feet, speed's still coming back at the moment, just bring the thrust back as well, let that speed bleed off a little bit more, slightly to the uh, left of the centre line here so we'll correct that. Maybe a touch low. I'm not sure we should get that pull up. And we're down. And coming to a stop. vacate the deck. Some of the areas on the deck aren't actually uh, hard surfaces so we'll just bring the aircraft off to the side. Part brake can come on and we'll get the aircraft shut down. So the right MFD can go off. Radios can come off, oxygen can go off, just a master caution there for the oxygen. We're at idle RPM, the uh, parking brake is on, throttle can come off, we'll open up the canopy. Left MFD can come off. Engine switch is off. We'll pull the fuel shut off, that's been pulled automatically, setting the throttle to off. And the batteries can come off. So that's the shutdown checklist complete.
So overall, once again, a really lovely product from India Fox Teco. And I think it's fair to say that currently this is the most comprehensive fighter jet that we have available in the sim. As always though, the product is not perfect. I do have a few criticisms and things I would like to see improved on the T-45. So as usual, we'll cap off the review and I'll give you my overall opinions on the product. Starting with my negative points, and there's two areas of the product that really stood out to me as being a little bit subpar. Both of these points though, I will caveat by saying they're only my opinions. I'm not that familiar with the Goshawk, so I'm not sure whether or not they're inaccuracies, or just areas where the aircraft doesn't actually behave as I would expect. So the first major issue that comes to mind is the flight controls and the flight modelling on the aircraft. As we saw during the stalls and the low speed handling exercises with the aircraft, the aircraft's behaviour at low speed seems quite simplistic, as is the case with pretty much all aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator currently to be fair. As always it's worth noting that developers are somewhat hamstrung by what they can do with the current SDK, but I do think it's worth mentioning as certainly if you were looking to purchase the T-45 for a more high fidelity jet flight model experience within the sim, well unfortunately this product does seem to display most of the same behaviours as the other aircraft we currently have. Also in terms of the flight controls and how the aircraft handles, and again I have no idea if this is accurate or not, but the aircraft just felt a little bit heavy, it wasn't as fun to fly or as responsive as I was expecting. Obviously the Goshawk is a bigger, bulkier jet than something like the MB339. The MB339 it's really nimble, it's really easy to chuck around, it's really great fun to fly. Whereas the Goshawk felt a little bit lumbering, heavy on the controls as I say, and often at times just didn't really feel like it was that interested in doing what I wanted it to do. To be more precise, the aircraft did actually feel quite nice in roll, it was really in pitch, where it was feeling a little bit heavy and cumbersome. Again, I have absolutely no experience flying the Hawk, even in other simulators, but how the aircraft felt didn't really live up to what I've heard about the aircraft, and given that this is essentially the same aircraft used by the Red Arrows, I suspect that the aircraft in reality is a little bit more nimble, a little bit more agile. My other disappointment with the product, and I'd certainly be interested to hear your thoughts on this, but I thought that the exterior engine sounds were really rather underwhelming. Overall the sound of the product is absolutely excellent. The cockpit sounds good, the engine sounds pretty reasonable internally, the gas turbine starter sounded really nice when that spools up, the same for the engine start itself. But as I say, the external engine sounds during flight sounded pretty weak, pretty uninspiring. Now again, I'm no expert on the Goshawk, but I've seen plenty of displays by the Red Arrows over the years, and I am pretty certain that the Hawk does not sound like that in flight. Obviously the Goshawk is not the most powerful aircraft that you'll ever come across, but I would still be expecting a lot more roar from that jet engine, a much deeper sound and a much greater cacophony of noise. As I say, overall it is a little bit disappointing as it lets down what is otherwise a very stellar sound engine on the aircraft. The other little niggle I had which we all saw was the launch bar of the nose gear clipping through the body of the aircraft. That was somewhat more minor though as it can easily be rectified and will hopefully be fixed in a future update. So to recap, I do think that the external sounds are a little bit disappointing, and I think I can say that fairly objectively. For the aircraft handling it may just be that I had incorrect preconceptions of how the Goshawk actually feels to fly, but I would say don't buy the aircraft expecting it to feel quite as nimble, quite as agile, and potentially quite as fun to fly as the MB339. My last negative point for the product, unfortunately it is a little bit of an FPS hog. I found that overall it was costing me about 25 FPS, so a pretty substantial drop there. But again I would just caveat that by stating that the aircraft systems modelling does seem to go into some depth. And so I think it is somewhat inevitable, although of course unfortunate, that as we see add-ons coming into the sim and stepping up in terms of complexity, we are going to see a reduction in frame rates. It's been the same in pretty much every flight simulator since their inception. Again though, it's definitely worth thinking about if you do have a lower end system or your system is already struggling a little bit to run Microsoft Flight Simulator. Anyway, it's probably all been sounding a little bit negative so far, but please don't misunderstand me. Whilst the product does have a couple of drawbacks, overall it's another really stellar effort from India Fox Teco. As we've seen, both the visual modelling and texturing internally and externally are some of the best to date within the sim. With the cockpit in particular, I think they've done a really, really nice job. I think it's also one of the most detailed aircraft that we've seen in terms of systems modelling to date. Whilst not every switch and control in the cockpit was operable, and some of the functionality within the MFDs was missing. Overall I was actually really impressed with just how much depth the aircraft had in terms of its systems. The aircraft comes with a 200 page manual, so I suppose that you know right off the bat that it's not going to be a light product. And similarly the in-sim checklists are extremely extensive, seemingly running through every step of the real world startup procedure. Again, most of which I was able to follow along with actuating the correct switches in the cockpit. 
So as I say, in terms of documentation, systems modeling and systems depth, I think that the T45 from India Fox Techo is probably the best add-on product to date. As far as the aircraft's sounds go, again I thought these were all excellent with the unfortunate exception of the external engine sounds, which again of course are rather a big deal. But the rest of the sounds were done to a really high standard and again gave the cockpit a really nice ambience. And lastly of course the T45 is our first proper carrier capable aircraft within the sim. That may or may not be of interest to you depending on what current setup you have within Microsoft Flight Simulator. As I mentioned at the start of the video, for now if you do want to use a carrier capable aircraft within the sim then you will need something like the Hard Deck Simulations module. In summary then, the T45 Goshawk from India Fox Techo is another absolutely amazing product from their team. I really enjoyed my time out in the aircraft and as I say I do think it is the most in-depth product currently available for the sim. I had really good fun sitting down with the extensive checklists and working my way through them figuring out the aircraft. So if you do have a higher end system and you're looking for a very nicely modelled and pretty high fidelity jet trainer within the sim, then I would suggest that the India Fox Techo T45 Goshawk is well worth a look. As always guys, I do hope that you enjoyed the video and found it to be of use. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me regarding the product, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'll always do my best to get back to you. But for now, thanks very much and I'll see you all again soon.